Hi, I'm the Woodpecker today. <laughs> Maybe you remember my TV lift? Well, now I start to work on my cabinet. You might remember that a year ago I said that I wanted to make a TV lift cabinet with the TV lift that TVLiftCabinet.com graciously sent me. A couple of weeks after the video, we bought a new TV. Then we removed the first piece of furniture I ever made from our living room. We put the new TV on a temporary table and then we had a really rough year. It started when Renée broke her ankle last December. I had to take care of her uh, more than usual. Then my mother came to live with us. She was really sick and we had to take care of her 24 seven. The same day she passed, I had a facial paralysis for a month. Needless to say, the cabinet was the last thing on my mind. We also spent two months at the cottage on several occasions and we did a bunch of work out there. Meanwhile, I managed to make some plans and I never stopped thinking about this cabinet. I think this will be the most challenging build I ever make since the shop. Yes, because I would like to make a cabinet which will look a lot like this one. This is our oldest piece of furniture in the house and it's full of carvings. <laughs> Maybe you remember my carving skill. I'll try to do better this time around. The first thing I do is take some pictures of the legs. In Photoshop, I draw the shape of the side of the legs. Here you can see the red lines marking what I need to cut and the green are the order in which I should cut them. I do the same thing for the top view. Now that I have all the patterns I need, it's time to check if they will work as expected. The first thing I do is cut some pieces of styrofoam. When I have enough, I glue them together. I cut it to the exact size of my patterns. To make a real test, I stick my patterns on it and cut it on the bensa. But my big blade is not really the tool for the job. I switch blade and I'm good to go. Okay, it's not hard to cut styrofoam, but there are a lot of cuts. And it's here that I realize that I will need extra support to make some cuts. When I'm done with the bandsaw, there are still some cuts to make, but I see that it's quite easy to make the rough cuts. Okay, I'm ready to try this with wood. I begin by preparing some basswood for two blanks. When the glue is dry, I stick my patterns on the blank and make the cuts according to the numbering I've tested with the styrofoam. But this time around, I stick a cutoff as extra support. Then I can begin with the bansa. I won't waste a lot of your time on my tests, but I managed to cut the two blanks. Now it's time to practice. We start with some cutoffs. Not just me, René also. But we figured pretty soon that without a model, we won't go far. So with the help of our neighbor, we bring the original inside the shop. With the legs in front of us, this goes a bit smoother. <laughs> but it was far from being to my liking. So I asked for help on Facebook. Two months later, Jesse saw the post and came to give us a crash course. He even brought some exercises with him. 
all day long. René and I carve them. Tu vois-tu la vague? Oui, je la vois la vague. Là, bon, avant de faire ta vague. And from there, I started to work on my first leg. Uh, René also tried, but she said that she can't wrap her mind around the 3D carving. I continue and manage to carve four legs just to get the hang of it. Uh, okay, it's not perfect, but it will do for the cabinet I want to make. But I don't want legs in basswood. I want them in walnut. So it's time to prepare some walnut. Now I need to glue them two by two. When I glue some walnut, I always use dark glue. Uh, but my glue is too old. I'm going to make dark glue with my usual glue and some walnut water-based stain. After pouring a random amount of stain on the glue, I stir that. When it's well mixed, I put this into a glue container and glue the blanks. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. When it is, it's far from being ready, because they need to be cut to the right size. On two of my tests, I didn't take into consideration the glue line, and this looked like crap. But on the other two, the glue line is dead center and disappears between two fingers. So I'm going to cut both sides of my blanks. But before goofing things up, I check if it's the size of my pattern. Since it is, I finish the cuts. Now that the blanks are the right size, it's time to stick the patterns on them. Here you can see that I've printed a mirror image on one side of the blanks. And since the first cut is 53.5 degrees, I move my Meyer saw to that angle and make the cuts. For this, I always use the mirror pattern. When I'm done, I stick a cutoff at one end, stick the other pattern, and go to the bandsaw. For the last cuts, I need to put the cutoffs in place so I can see where to cut. Here it is, one rough blank. I need to do this for the other one now. Now I have two legs ready to be carved. After four test legs, I know that I need to start with the center. But one thing is sure, even if walnut is not the hardest wood, <laughs> it's way harder than basswood. But besides pushing harder, carving is the same. This is just after 30 minutes. It's starting to take shape. But it's far from being done. This is what it looks like after two and a half hours. It looks a lot like a lion's feet. 
but I still need to make this part. Now I need to take care of the top of the leg. After marking what I need to remove, I use a handsaw to cut most of it and finish the job with chisels and gouges. Now I need to carve the back of the leg. For this, I need to screw the leg to a piece of scrap. With it firmly screwed in place, I use a carving disc and remove most of what I want to remove. But right after that, I'm back to my gouges. Rasp. and sandpaper. I don't like to see the gouges facets, so I send them away. All this sanding still takes a lot of time. But nonetheless, after four and a half hours, I went from this shape to this one. <laughs> Not bad. I'm happy with it. I take a break for the rest of the day. The next morning, I'm back in the shop carving the second leg. Uh, but after three hours of work, disaster. I remove a big chunk of wood over the big nut. With such a big nut like this, I figure I won't be able to make a good job. So I prepare another piece of walnut. But now I need to wait for the glue to dry. And it's then that I decide to cut off the last finger. I plane the cut straight and glue another piece of walnut to replace the finger. Yes, I'll try to fix this, just to see what it would look like. Plus, it's a really good exercise on how to fix a carving. The next day, I'm ready to prepare another blank. <laughs> Since it's my seventh blank, I know the drill. It's ready in less than an hour. Now, I just need to carve it. Four and a half hours later, I have two walnut legs. I've even finished carving the other leg. When we look at it from this angle, we can't see it's an artificial finger. But because of the nut, it's not the same story if we look at it from the back. When I put my leg just beside the original, I see that this part hmm, is lower than mine. So it's time to try the new look on my extra leg. I like it. I will do it on the real one. On the originals, there are small lines to simulate fur. I trace them and carve them. Here are my finished legs beside the original. It's not 100% alike, but still 
I'm happy with the result. If I'm able to do this, well, anyone can do it. But I still have a lot of work to do on this cabinet. The next step will be the bottom moldings. And this won't be easy. So you'll have the opportunity to see my TV box going up and down several times before my cabinet is finished. Until then, don't forget to come back to the woodpecker.